Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of the Rifle Tree YouTube channel. Today I went shooting because I'm rifle chair and that's what I do. But what pray tell were you shooting today, rifle chair at the range? And I think probably by the name of this video, it kind of gives it away. However, it is the CZ557 range 308. And um, what a beautiful little rifle this is. If you want to know more, stay tuned. So new to 2016, it's 2017 now, but uh, in 2016, uh, CZ came out with a push feed bolt action manual operated rifle, and this is it right here. Um, this is not the control round feed CZ 550 that so many of you are familiar with and love very, very much. This is CZ's entry into the push feed rifle platform. I, am, I do prefer control round feeding in all of my bolt actions when I, when I can manage that. I try to. <laughs> there are certain ones I like, certain ones I don't like. Um, but I, I wanted to, because I was such a big believer in the CZ brand, I had to try the new 557. But additionally, this one, the Range, which is being marketed also as the Ranger, and I'll tell you why it's marketed as the Ranger, is because ZZ entered this rifle platform in the competition for the new Canadian Ranger rifle replacement program. All right, who are the Canadian Rangers? The Canadian Rangers are a military unit in Canada that uh, is a reserve type unit that uh, occupies small towns. They live in small towns and ultra difficult to get to locations where primary elements of the Canadian Armed Forces cannot provide any kind of uh, logistical coverage. So areas in the high Arctic, there are, there are numerous patrols along the west coast in, uh, and mainly along the, uh, the east coast maritime provinces, but this is where you're going to see. And these, these folks, they're uh, essentially uh, eyes and ears for the military, situational awareness, scouts, um, well-trained and experienced in bushcraft. They come from all walks of life, doctors, technicians, mechanics, ex-forces uh, members that have retired. They go into the Rangers and it's, uh, it's a good little program. Good little unit. And uh, this rifle was designed to replace what was put together with, it is, with a view to replace the aging Lee Enfield number 4 Mark 1. And the reason why it's still in service is, is, uh, is it's a good question, but it is still in service with the Canadian Armed Forces for this unit. And it is getting very, very old. Parts are almost impossible to obtain. And so they need a new rifle. So uh, the Government of Canada put out a request for proposals and bidders put their designs in. And it may, met specific criteria. They wanted specific criteria. And what the Government of Canada did was they approached uh, uh, Canadian Rangers officers and uh, NCOs and they also approached the, uh, the Canadian Ranger um, members themselves and asked them what kind of rifle is it that you need? What are the features? What are the, what are the technical specifications? What does it need to, to do? What is its role and function? for you guys. And, and so they gave them that information. And essentially it came down to this. The survey is called the Human Factors Requirements. And it's unclassified information. It's, it's public domain. 
uh, you can do a search for that on Google. The, the report will, will pop up. It's about a 20 or 30 page report. And what it essentially tells the uh, Department of National Defense is that they wanted a push feed bolt action rifle chambered in 308 with a 20 to 22 inch barrel. Um, they wanted it to have the, uh, the prospect of running open sights or having a 1913 style Picatinny rail on the receiver to bolt an optical sight if so uh, uh, desired. They wanted to have a 10 round detachable box magazine. Um, and that pretty much is what it came down to. That's what they wanted. Uh, they didn't want control ground feeding. They wanted to push feed because if they just had a, uh, an empty magazine, they could throw a single round in the chamber and close the bolt and shoot it. They just want that uh, that adaptability that put that a push feed comes to uh, organ it and a roll like that. And we're talking about a roll of patrolling in areas that are some of the most extreme terrain and weather conditions on the planet. And so they wanted a rifle that was going to be able to function reliably and with accuracy in those environments. So the request for proposals went out. There are a number of bidders. One of them was Tika, and uh, another one was CZ. And um, this was CZ's submission. It was the CZ557. The CZ557, um, according to their website, was in part partially designed for the purposes of providing the Canadian Rangers with a rifle. So thanks to the Canadian Rangers, the world now has a CZ557. Uh, it's called the range, but really it's the it's the ranger submission that they that they that they put in. It has the ten round det detachable box magazine, which is a g fantastic magazine, by the way. It's got a plastic uh, follower and a base plate. It is a push feed, just like the request for proposals uh, specified. It's got a nice feeding ramp, nice broad uh, feeding ramp to, to enter rounds into the chamber. It is beautifully milled. Um, the bolt is nice and buttery smooth. And it has the 19 millimeter dovetail mounts that you will see pretty much any of the bolt action centerfire rifle cartridge um, CZ rifles with. Um, the, uh, the rifle does come with, with a, a Petter 1913 rail which should bolt straight onto the top here and we'll get into that. So it does have the dual functionality of having the 19 millimeter dovetails and the rail. But you'll also notice that I have an NECG peep sight on here, which is an incredible, incredible product. It's on this rifle for a reason. I put that on here because CZ refers to this rifle as the universal rifle, meaning that it's essentially a small carbine that's going to be able to do everything. Everything that you would want a rifle to do for you. It's got the modularity and functionality where you can remove um, uh, the rail, you can put on 19 millimeter dovetail sights, you can use the rail, you can run a scope, you can, you can use, there's also a, uh, a rear sight that you can, that bolts onto the barrel here, which I have removed. It's got um, a fiber optic glow type of uh, front sight, a red bead sight, which is very nice. And very adaptable, very adaptable rifle. Now, when you are looking at buying a rifle, every buyer that has any experience goes through a process where they're evaluating. They've already considered, geez, you know, I need a rifle to do this job. Excuse me. I need a rifle to do this job. It needs to have, it needs to be able to function in this kind of manner. And it has to be able to do this. So, in what capacity are you going to use the rifle? What is the niche for this rifle? And what are the boundaries or limitations of the rifle? And what are the tolerances? Is it going to fit a tactical, a utilitarian, a hunting, or a wilderness defense role? You know, for example, you got to know what it's going to be used for. Well, CZ built this rifle to do all of that. I mean, that was their that was their submission. They they did not get the contract. The contract went to Tika, which uh, submitted the uh, for the new C-19 rifle, which is the Ranger replacement rifle. They submitted a, a T3 uh, light, which has essentially got a 20, maybe 21 inch barrel on it, semi-heavy profile, stainless and a laminated woodstock with a CTR base, basic design, 
detachable turn around magazine Picatinny rail with a HK91 G3 type of, of uh, rotating rear sight bolted onto the rail. And it, uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful little rifle. It is now on the market, which you can buy. Um, it's actually interesting. It's going on the commercial market before it actually enters into onto the scale of issue with the Canadian Armed Forces. But you can buy uh, the commercial variant, variant of it. It's called the Arctic for about $2,700 Canadian. It's very, very, very expensive. Now, the, um, the, um, the CZ Ranger, on the other hand, is retailing at around $1,200. MRSP. So it's it's nowhere near the $2,700 price tag of the Tika, but it fills a similar role and function to that rifle for less than half the price. Now I've I've been running this rifle now for two and a half months, three months, something like that. And um, for a while I struggled with this rifle because it didn't really fit in any one niche that I needed filled. Um, I wanted a utilitarian rifle, but I couldn't get this thing to fill any particular niche. I'll tell you why. Firstly, is the weight. Now, if you want a, um, a rifle that's going to weigh 10 pounds, over 10 pounds loaded with optics on it, then you want one of these. Because after you put the weaver rail on, you put the scope and the rings and a loaded magazine, you're carrying 10 over 10 pounds in your in your in your hands yeah it's it's not a lightweight rifle it's it's not um, so with the scope on there I tried different scopes and um, what's it, had various range sessions with the rifle and it was just cumbersome because the weight heavy weight and um, um, as configured here with the peep sight we're um, we're running around seven pounds which isn't so bad right and that's empty though okay but it couldn't fill any particular niche for me so um, I discovered the NECG rear sight somebody on Canadian gun nuts had a picture of one and I said I need that and uh, these are unobtainium in Canada it's very very difficult to find one I managed to find one uh, that was being sold used so I picked it up turns out it had never been mounted before so it's been zeroed and I'm shooting two inch groups at 200 meters with this rifle. Running um, 180 green uh, Federal Power Shock ammunition, soft points. And yeah, it's the, it's the commercial, you know, bottom of the, of the pile, non-premium ammunition in that bullet weight that Federal puts out. But I'm shooting two inch groups with it at 200 meters with open with peep sights. All right, so. Um, I found what I want this rifle to do. Detachable 10, 10 run box magazine. Good quality um, peep sight with a, with a red glow um, front sight. That, that, um, that front sight really, really stands out when you're out um, in, the, in the open like this. If you're in a dark area, you're not going to be able to see it. But you'll, see the, you'll be able to, still be able to see the silhouette of the front post, but the red bead obviously isn't going to be wasn't going to be showing up. Incidentally, the uh, the original rear sights that were mounted here on the rifle, they do glow in the dark, the dots, but they are not tritium and, um, impregnated. They're just glow in the dark paint, uh, which is still pretty cool. Um, so I've, I found the niche. It's uh, in this position, if you're working in timber, if you're working in forest, forestry like I am, if you don't have wide open spaces, you have generally look quite, you know, you're walking through this, getting tangled up through branches and so on then this might be a, a formulation that you might want to consider. Okay, pros and cons of the CZ-557 range. Um, I don't know if this is unique to this rifle or if you, this is something you can expect from all of them. But this rifle, as alluded to previously, is an incredibly accurate shooter. Um, for a 20.5 inch barrel, I was uh, not expecting what I would come to know as incredible match grade accuracy out of this little out of this little rifle, and I suspect part part of it is probably got to do with the mass of the rifle, which allows you to. I mean, ultra lightweight rifles. I have always had difficulty trying to get any kind of consistent um, shooting out of it, but this rifle is built like a friggin' tank. 
and uh, and because it is does have a bit of mass to it, around seven pounds, as configured right now, uh, the recoil was very tame as well as with a 180 grain bullet. What it turns out to is one of the reasons why this particular rifle is so accurate is because it has a match grade chamber. Now I don't know if that was by design, but semi specifications for the 308 Winchester is 1.630 inches, as I recall, and that is where the the uh, the case 308 Winchester uh, headspace is on on the, the the middle node of the shoulder of the cartridge, as I recall. I'm going by memory here. Now using a RCBS precision mic, I have mic'd brass have been fired out of this rifle at 3,000 under semi spec. So uh, 1.627 inches. Ah, yeah, that's about right. One, just just under that actually. So this chamber here is tight, very very tight. There is a drawback to that though. If you're not running good quality ammunition, um, the bolt may not close all the way, right? Or maybe halfway. Now this has happened to me with some of the really cheap steel case Norinco ammunition out there, where the case was just too long for me to be able to get the bolt closed. All right? And even with uh, um, a, a good amount of the factory ammunition that I ran through this rifle, the um, you could see the um, could see the the contact points uh, where the where the where the case head space is in the chamber, right? So it's you're actually having a little bit of pressure putting the bolt down to, to close it with this rifle. I am I don't know if this is going to be common across all of them. Uh, in some ways, it is a con because it does not give you the, uh, the really the reliability for sh for running poor quality ammunition like steel case Chinese um, stuff. The uh, the best shooting ammunition that I've, I've shot out of this rifle was uh, Federal Gold Match 168 grains and I've been miking that brass too and it's like 6 thou under semi. Uh, this is before it's fired and, it's, and after it's fired it's 3 thou under semi. So. And semi, S-A-A-M-I is just a um, terminology for um, technical specifications of the dimensions of a chamber with with, with to do with the, the case stretching and headspace issues that some rifles suffer from. Um, weight is a pro because it helps with recoil, but it, it is a con because um, fielding it is it's more difficult. You get tired arms faster. Now, however, seven pounds for me is nothing. I'm used to lugging Lee Enfields around the bush. Like I've my whole life, I've been shooting Lee Enfields, full weight. I just keep them the way they were they were built. So this for me is great. Um, uh, another pro is the customize the customize the customization that you can do with it um, with between the the weaver rail which is made of steel, very very rugged very but it's also heavy as well so it adds to the weight. Um, between the 19 millimeter uh, scope rings and mounts that you can put on here the built-in uh, scope rails onto the receiver and the rail itself. Um, it is uh, compact. The cone is low enough, which will allow you to access the the rear sights, right? So it's pretty much your typical American uh, type. A lot of the older CZ 550s had kind of a European swept um, buttstock. This one here kind of follows more along the American, but the profile isn't so bad where you can actually get your your face down, so you can use the sights quite effectively. Um, in the design, the one of the pros and the cons, in my opinion, is that the mag release is inside the trigger guard. Now, for, for most most applications, I would say that that is a pro because you're not going to have a, a branch hit this thing and, and knock the paddles off like you would see with, um, conceivably, with a Tika CTR. Or and most of the Accuracy International mag releases are a paddle in behind the magazine forward of the trigger guard. And if you knock it on your gear or it hits a branch, your magazine could fall out. But with the with the release being inside the trigger guard, it's unlikely that's going to happen. But the con to that is you got to put your fingers in the trigger guard to get the magazine out. And if you have a greenhorn or somebody that uh, doesn't have a lot of experience, um, they might not necessarily be 100% safe with their rifle. Putting any fingers inside the trigger guard... Um, if they're confused or there may be other things going on around them that distract them, they're not paying attention to safety, 
it's always a concern when you're training somebody on a rifle like this that they may have a loaded chamber and they put their finger inside the trigger guard to release the magazine and something goes boom. Okay, but this that's part of the, your training regime is uh, safety precautions of applying the safety. Um, there is of course a cocking indica an indicator on the back which is, which is red, stands out quite nicely. I'm not going to do a big review like a lot of these other websites. There's lots of information out there, but there's your cocking piece. Okay, disappears when you when you pull the trigger, and uh, it's a two-piece safety, which is for me um, all right. You cannot raise the bolt with the safety applied. Um, for me, that is kind of both a pro and and, and a con because well, it's a pro because it's simple. It's on or off. But I like having a, a three-stage um, safety where I can lift the bolt and, um, and and manually strip the ammunition out of the internal box magazine. But to keep things simple, stupid, a two, a two safe, safety is fine, especially for a box magazine like this. You just pull the ammunition out. Uh, the beech stock is tough. That's a pro. I like beech wood. I mean, it's dense. Um, it's going to be difficult to break, dent, scratch. Because it's beach and beach is tough, but the pro, that's a pro for me, but the con is weight. This is dense wood and it's very strong. Um, it's, it's uh, the magazine, a pro is that it's very easy to disassemble and clean. Thankfully you can. Not all magazine manufacturers design their magazines to be easily torn apart. Um, it has a two stage trigger and it has beautiful. It's kind of um, it's not like a uh, a Lee Enfield or a Keen 98 trigger where you got, uh, but it is nice and uh, nice and crisp, uh, a little bit springy for the first stage, but the second stage is very nice and it's around three and a half with a five pound break. Um, pro high accuracy, the short bolt, so when you're you're engaging targets. The bolt does not come back and slap you in the cheekbone, which is nice. Um, I would also say as a pro that the CZ557 is not one of those race to the bottom budget rifles. Okay, it's not. It's not built to try to, to um, to capture a market that doesn't want to spend more than three hundred or four hundred dollars on a rifle, that's not the rifle for those people. This is a little bit more sophisticated in that regard. It's not a budget entry level level rifle necessarily. The way I see it, I see it as a working person's rifle. It's a utilitarian rifle with lots of things that you can do that you can configure it or use it. Um, I mean, if you want to buy a Savage Axis or a Remington seven eighty three or something to that effect, then this isn't, probably isn't the rifle for you. That's what you're, where you're leaning. Okay, some of the things that I don't like about the 557. The first one, which I immediately discovered, was the bolt release. It is a pain in the ass, and I do not like it. It's a terrible, terrible bolt release. Right here, next to the uh, bolt you'll see this tiny little it took me for a while it took me a while to find it but right there is the bolt release you've got to take your thumbnail where is it you got to take your thumbnail and press in until the bolt comes out and it's a tiny little eighth of an inch piece of steel that you've got to press down below the um, before the flush level area of the receiver here at the, at the aft end of the, of the rifle hate it just being honest I like having something that is that is um, that you can grab <laughs> or push to to release the bolt. Sorry, but I don't like that. That's a terrible idea. Height over bore uh, when the um, when the Picatinny rail is bolted onto the top of the rifle. I'll put a I'll put a picture in here. Here is a uh, picture of the um, of the rifle so uh, configured with the rail on medium Leupold rings, one inch uh, rings with a uh, 3 to 9 by 40 Bushnell Legend Ultra HD with a uh, DOA reticle. Great scope, by the way. It's got side focus. The, the quality is great. But you can see how, how high that scope is um, 
above the rifle and um, you kind of lose your cheek piece when you got a scope that high up off your rifle. It could have come down a little bit more but uh, as you can see some space under the front bell but what I will say is that um, because this is a 90 degree, 90 degree bolt release I'm running gloved hands it's winter time and uh, it's nice to have a little bit of clearance between the bolt and the, and the objective of the scope when you're shooting in those situations. It's nice to have that. But uh, so a height over bore is just a, a little little bit high. Um, yeah, you, I can't. I could I could have run low low rings with that with that scope. I didn't have any, so but that's that's just the way it goes. But I did have the convenience of having some space under the bolt. So I don't like that either. Um, the front sight, oh, the front sight base is made of aluminum. And using some uh, using some uh, foaming bore cleaner, I let it sit overnight, and it took all the paint off the uh, the front of the aluminum front sight base. That bugged me. Just saying, if you do the same thing, it's going to happen to you too. It's it's not adenizing. It's some type of probably baked on enamel paint or something. Uh, and it doesn't like forming, forming bore cleaner and it just ate all the, uh, the finish off the, the, the front sight. Uh, the front sight is adjustable for ele elevation and the rear sight is adjustable for windage as it comes from the uh, factory to you. That's fine, that's, that's, not a, that's not a con, I just wanted to bring that up. Uh, the, uh, the, the, front, the glow front sight is fragile and I can see if it doesn't have the front sight protector on there, it, it could easily break. You, you probably can't, but anyway, um, it is pretty. It's pretty fragile. If we, get, if we got a good whack, it, it wouldn't. It wouldn't survive. Okay, continuing on with cons. The uh, the magazine is not a press fit. If you hit that mag release, then it'll just fall right out. It is, takes no effort to insert it or to extract it. Some people will like that. I don't, because it means it's not tight. Right? And I have discovered that when I'm shooting, I'm, I have a tendency to hold it like a grip, which means I'm pushing the, the magazine back and it's canting forward like that. And I have had two feeding errors because of that. There is a problem with the magazine. The magazine is the construction of itself, it runs brilliantly. It's a great magazine, but the fit needs to be tighter. I'll see what I can do to fix that, but I suspect they're all going to be like that. But um, so long as I'm not pulling back on the magazine, I don't feel the resistance when I'm running the bolt. Uh, so that's just a, a comment on the magazine, which I, I thought that there, there could that could have been done better. Not a press fit, like a Leon Field man. You got to cram that magazine and get it in there to hear that audible click. This one here, there's no effort to insert or to remove. Um, the mag release on here. It looks like plastic to me. Yeah, it is. It's a plastic mag release. Now I know that um, polymers and plastics, the technology and the, and the quality of plastics these days are exceptional. But this is one part in the rifle that I think should have been a steel piece. I mean, they're obviously not trying to make this a lightweight rifle. Why is that tiny little piece not made of steel? It should be a high carbon steel. High, high um, strong piece, not a piece of plastic. Um, sight radius. Oh, there's okay. Yes. Now, when the human factors requirements was put together, they said they wanted for the Canadian Rangers. They wanted a mill spec type of rifle, like the Lee Enfield, built to military specifications, rugged, right? They didn't want a just off the store, just off the shelf rifle for a hunting rifle. They, they want something that was going to get, take a look and keep on ticking. Right? So um, they wanted something to the effect also of a, like a light rail. It could have been a rail on the sides. This rifle, you'll see there. there's two studs in the front. Prob one probably for a bipod, the other for the sling. Um, well, I'll get into that. So maybe instead of inserting a, a bipod sling, they could have put a tiny piece of rail so you could put like a um, some form of illumination. So 
So if you're out and a grizzly bear walks into your camp at night, you can illuminate the, the, the target and, and engage it if required. Secondly, I would say that the use of sling swivels was, was a bad idea. Some kind of um, built into the rifle sling swivel system such as what the, the K98 Mausers and the Lee Enfields had during World War II. Right? The, that's not going to pull out. These will pull out. That, I know that that's going to be a problem because I know tickets submit the same thing with the, uh, for the C19. So basically the sling swivels I would have said no. No sling swivels, built-in mil-spec type of two screw, you know, plates that you can screw into the wood or bolt into the wood. And right here, some type of 1913 rail for a light. That would have been a, a better way to go. <clears throat> uh, the rate of fire is not significantly improved over the CZ 550. It's not. And one of the, one of the reasons why, you know, they went with the, the push feed is because, well, the, the market was calling for one apparently. But it's not significantly faster. Now, when I first got this, I was having difficulty just moving the bolt back and forth over time. I mean, it was stiff. I mean, I had to work, work, and work, oil it, and work it, and work it. That's what you do in front of the TV, you know, those nights, trying to get this thing to, to run, because you know you want it to run reliably. Um, one of the reasons why it's not really much, maybe it is a, slightly, a slight amount faster, is but is that the bolt knob is very very long you can see the the type of bolt lift there okay it's 90 degrees 90 degree bolt lift but because the bolt is uh, is so long you're actually canting this this bolt over on a bit of an angle when you when you strike that bolt knob right you get resistance because it's binding on the inside of the action the ins inside of the action is smooth but you may want to start off with a little bit of oil or a little bit of grease in the right spots uh, to help to deal with that. I, I'm going to polish it with 1000 grit sa um, sandpaper and just try to smooth it out a little bit. That'll help a lot. But again, this is from a brand new rifle that it's going through a break-in process, right? Hopefully stuff like that will get itself sorted out. So you do have the bolt camming um, and the bolt length, which is great for it's a short action, so we don't all have to run the, the nice the long CZ 550 action. Um, seven and a quarter pounds empty, so it's a little bit on the heavy side, and that's how it's configured here. It's nine pounds, 11 ounces unloaded without the weaver rail, right? And it's over 10 pounds with the weaver rail and uh, rings and scope and sling, and, okay? So it is heavy, that's, that's a con. So that's pretty much it, folks. Um, I'll run in some uh, some footage of the rifle shooting just for your interest, and um, it's a it's a utilitarian rifle. It's going to be able to do it's a jack of all trades, but master of none. But it's great accuracy, handy, and tough, tough. Hope you enjoyed that, folks. Rifle right sending off, and as always, Maple Leaf up. Saw that? Didn't bring her back all the way and she didn't eject. That's the problem with the plunger system is that uh, you don't get a good feel for when it uh, pops up and doesn't pop out compared to a CRF or controlled round feeding Mauser action. You can feel it. But make sure you pull the bolt all the way back on this. Or that'll happen to you. But it seems to cycle fast enough.
Okay, so here we are at uh, 200 meters, shooting at this thing off bags with open sights using the NECG uh, peep sight. And we've got a little group here, one, two, three. That's what the 180 grain uh, uh, 308 Federal shock, shock point, or shock power, or shock point, I think it is. Anyway, so that's about an inch and a half at, uh, maybe two inches at uh, 200 meters. So that's pretty good for open sights for any rifle, in my opinion. So we're going to do a quick sight correction, and uh, we'll reacquire and do it again. I like this sight.